I hated the PlayStation Classic from the start, and sure, not everybody agreed with me, but I felt like it was something that was too easily replaced by any of the other Sony home consoles or even handhelds that came before it because they could all play PlayStation 1 games in one way or another. And then plus with the price of emulation machines like a Raspberry Pi these days, the $100 price mark for the PlayStation 1 Classic just seemed too high. But earlier this week, Sony officially cut the price to $60. And some stores, of course, are running this as a sale, as it being $40 off. But the truth is, it's a permanent price cut down to $60, which is almost to say that maybe Sony made too many of these and they now need to move them and get rid of them. And odds are they did make too many of them. It was extremely popular when it was announced. There was a lot of hype for it. There were pre-orders that were made that were later canceled. And while that's not the only contributing factor, the truth is I think Sony estimated that they would sell a lot more of these than they actually have up to this point which is why I feel really bad for anybody that bought one. I mean, they overpaid $40 for something that, you know, three weeks later got this massive price cut. And of course, Sony isn't gonna do anything for those people to reward them because you know they can't give them a free download for a new game on their PlayStation Classic because it doesn't have internet connectivity in the first place. Now I will say the people I don't feel bad for are the people who came into the comment section of the video I originally made and talked about how they were a reseller that planned to buy five of them and then resell them online for $200. This was not the NES or the SNES. This was something that I believe was simply built to fail. And for anybody that bought five of them and you know now bought something for $100 that's now worth 60 and lost 50, $40 on each one, I don't feel bad for you, but the real question is, is it finally worth it to buy the PlayStation 1 Classic? Right now, it's actually hacked and you're able to add your own games to it, obviously, at the cost of purchasing a hard drive to put the games on or a large USB stick and then sacrificing one of your USB ports, limiting you to one controller, but you are able to put more games on it, which I think is a great selling point for a lot of people if they're open to the idea of modifying and adding, you know, ripped games onto this console. So for $60, you think, well, this is the exact same cost of a new game. I mean, Sony really could have just released this as a PS4 disc that came with 20 preloaded PS1 games on it. Could have been like the PlayStation 1 anniversary collection, even though we're a little late for the anniversary. They could have slapped it on one disc, sold it for 60 bucks, and in effect, you would get the same thing. Now, of course, you would have had to have had a PlayStation 4 to play that, but obviously the cost of producing it would have been lower. I have no idea how much it costs for Sony to make each and every one of these consoles, but my guess is it's in the area of $40 when you factor in the licensing fees of the game and the cost to produce the console and controllers. So I think that right now is potentially the lowest price we will ever see it. Obviously Best Buy could decide to run it on sale for $50 or something like that, but the odds of that happening anytime soon after a massive $40 price cut seems really unlikely. So if you have any interest in buying one, I would say right now is the time to do it. At 60 bucks, maybe they'll move fairly quickly, but regardless, Sony will probably never produce any more of these because they couldn't get rid of the initial stock. I've seen this happen before. I purchased a PlayStation TV with the Lego video game in a bundle on clearance at Best Buy for something like $30, relatively cheap. Um, it retailed at originally, I think, at 100 or 120. I bought it at about 75% off. Because the PlayStation TV was a massive failure, nobody really seemed to know what it did. And then ultimately now, the same PlayStation TV is, you know, upwards of $100 on eBay because they didn't produce any more of them. And while I got one really cheap on clearance, they don't produce them anymore, so obviously the price went up. So if you have an interest in this or, you know, you are a collector and you didn't purchase it initially, this is the time to buy it. Now, I will say that for me personally, as somebody who'd be interested in actually playing the games on this, this is not the console for me to own. And the big stumbling block is 
the controller. And I know people are super purists and they're like, the, the DualShock came out later. This is the way to play PS1 games, you know, with the D pad. But the truth is to me, the DualShock came out in the PlayStation 1 era. That means to me that the best way to play a PlayStation 1 game is with a DualShock. This is not the most optimal way to play a PlayStation 1 game using a D-pad, especially if you add in you know, other games from your collection that you put on a hard drive and you add on to this console. Playing it with a D-pad is just going to be a joy kill, I think, in the long run. Obviously, if you could purchase a third-party controller or something like that that you know gives you the DualShock feel, that would help out a lot, but I don't see there being replacement controllers for this that have analog sticks anytime soon, just simply because that would require different drivers that the console is currently lacking, and without a software update, it would have to be done through a mod in order to add drivers to support analog sticks anyways. So that's my views on the PlayStation Classic now as a $60 console. I think that if you're a collector and you didn't buy it initially, this is the time to buy it. And if you're someone who just simply wants to play the games again, and you're comfortable with strictly using a D-pad for every game, go for it. I mean, it's not that big of a gamble at this point. It's the cost of a new retail game. But if you really want to play a lot of different games on, you know, add your own games from a hard drive, hack it, whatnot, I think that being limited to just using the D-pad is going to be something that's going to kill the buzz of the console in the long run. It's just not the most optimal way to be playing PlayStation 1 games, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments section below. I'm Bailey, and I will see you in the next video.